In this segment, I'll cover the basics of wiring the relay outputs and power supply to the fast unit. First, you'll see that we've designed the wiring compartment door to be removable. Simply snap it off the hinges to remove it. This is very helpful during the wiring process. Note that each of the alarm and fault indications is provided with its own terminal block for its respective relay output. This includes alert, action 1, action 2, fire 1, fire 2, and the minor fault and urgent fault outputs. These are labeled on the circuit board for easy identification. Each of these can be connected to a monitor module for communication of status at the fire alarm control panel. In this example, I'll wire the Fire 2 indicator. Remove the terminal block labeled Fire 2 on the circuit board. You have the option of wiring to this relay in a normally open or normally closed condition. This allows you to choose the correct output for your monitor device and control panel. First, slide the negative conductor into the correct position on the terminal block and tighten the locking screw. Make sure you haven't trapped any insulator under the clamp. Repeat this for the positive conductor. Then, simply reinstall the terminal block to its location on the circuit board. You'll notice we've included a 47 kilo ohm resistor with the unit. This is for applications where the isolate terminal won't be wired to the control panels. Some panels will be able to use the isolate terminals as an external monitor to reset the unit remotely via the control panel. If this feature isn't used, the resistor is provided to give the fast unit the proper reference resistance and prevent an isolate fault on the device. Remove the terminal block from the isolate position on the circuit board, as I already have, and then wire the provided resistor to the outer two terminals as I'm doing here. Then, Reinstall the terminal block to the correct location on the circuit board. Finally, I'll show how to wire your incoming 24 volt power source to the fast unit. Similar to the aspiration piping, we've provided conduit entries at both the top and bottom of the unit. Typically, you'd use conduit to bring the wiring to the device, but for purposes of this demonstration, I'll bring our wiring directly into the device through this bottom entry point. First, remove the external power terminal block. We provide both in and out positions on the terminal block to allow you to wire multiple devices in series from a single power source. Here I'm wiring only one unit, so I'll only use the first set of positive and negative connections. Then, as before, reinstall the terminal block. After about three seconds, you'll see the front panel display cycle through the LED check and you'll hear the aspiration fan come up to operating speed. Once your particulate level and flow levels are showing steady green, you know the unit is properly wired. You're now ready to reinstall the wiring compartment door. Do this by simply pressing it back onto the upper and lower hinges. Finally, you have the option of locking the wiring compartment door closed with the included screw.